sexually transmitted infection and how they can affect infertility is the focus mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. Let's start off this way as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, what are sexually transmitted infections? Okay, thank you so much. An infection that is transmitted or contact, contacted through um, or contracted through sex. Intercourse, yes. Or intercourse, sexual intercourse. Yes. You can have non-sexual ways of even contracting it. Mm. And it's caused by three categories of pathogens. Mm. The bacteria, viruses and parasites. You know, Absolutely. and that's basically what sexually transmitted infection is. What is sexually transmitted infection? If you notice, it can be used interchangeably with yes. STD. STDs. A lot of people need to get it right right now. In fact, you need to get infected first before it transforms into a disease. Disease. Now, the difference between the two is just the sh um, when symptoms um, start to show or okay. you start to have features. So, okay. if you don't um, have any features, you still remain infected without having a progression into a disease. So we can't use the word disease. So one can even say that um, I want to develop into, into an STD. It's almost like saying I'm HIV and then I yes. can't say I'm AIDS. Yes. AIDS is the disease, it's HIV so. is the infection, infection itself. So. Yes. so moving on, it is so easy to miss the infection because most of the time in both men and women, they do not show any symptoms. So if it can be left untreated and while it's still doing its damage, because a lot of these infections are pretty strong. You know, they're pretty strong. So how do you, if you eventually leave that area of asymptom um, asymptomatic uh, um, area, yeah. you definitely, for some women, the, the first signs they really get are lower abdominal pain. You know, they, they wonder why they're having lower abdominal pain. And it can be acute, it can be can go on for so long and then sometimes it follows with the fever then you have um, vaginal discharge that mm. can be foul smelling and you know offensive basically it's funny colors and then you can have in men you can have uh, things like um, abnormal penile discharge that is maybe whitish or some sorts and painful of course and then of course there'll be ulcers around the genitals sometimes rashes and then for women too they have pain during intercourse mm. and then abnormal bleeding so many funny things basically that you know bother around basically yeah. urinary symptoms painful maturation they find it difficult to pass urine and then even while they're passing urine by the time they see that they're having discharges usually and then of course they also have oh, young people who want to end up settling down they don't remember that they've actually exposed themselves to a lot of things and that's why we advocate for girls who are not sexually active there are vaccines that can also protect them from certain you know viruses and all of that Infection, yes, yes. Yeah, at which they need to take at an early age but let's not look for at the girls who that are, are not sexually active yes of course you don't have to be sexually active for you to be able to get the vaccine but moving on the people who are predisposed like i said it's exchange of um, body fluids yes. and all sorts of things you need to like be like a young person, usually young people between five, 15 and 24. You know, yes. that is usually the youthful exuberant stage. Yes. They like to explore, they party a lot. And of course, in partying, they're exposed to substance abuse and which of, of course affects their reasoning, their judgment and makes them do things that, you know, carelessly, yes. you know. And then of course, um, part of substance abuse, alcohol intake and all of that. And you know, when you take alcohol, especially when you take it in excess, it kind of disinhibits you. And you start to act funny and act and um, indulge in certain behaviors that are considered risky. Mm. Then, of course, um, people who are also involved in having unprotected intercourse that don't see anything as far as they know, they know right hand for face, mm. they will go ahead. I'm like, you don't judge people based on, like I said before, infections, you don't see them. They're not yes. written, especially if it's someone that's healthy. Yes. You cannot pick these things. And then, of course, people that have multiple sexual intercourse, like, for example, multiple all these sexual partners. Close partners, yes. excuse me. Now, I just feel sorry for a lot of zaddies who have, like, excuse me, side chicks yeah. who they think are loyal to them. Mm. The truth is, those side chicks are also hustling. Yeah, they are so once you, once you are done and you leave, they are definitely, the, exactly. Mm. So, multiple sexual partners is one of the predisposing. And people who use um, drug, who are drug, IV drug users, yes. who tend to shoot um, substances up yes. their veins. Then people who have had histories of recurrent STIs. Yes. Definitely, if you had it once, you are prone to having it again, especially when you expose yourself. Mm. And in fact, you, everything, because there's fibrosis, where your one infection is trying to heal, there's, you know, when you have a cut and that area is not naturally okay again. Completely, so completely. there's some form of fibrosis. Form. So definitely, there's friction. It's going to tear open faster than 
yeah. a regular person. So if you've had a history of sexually transmitted infection, you're definitely going to um, use it. For well, now, I think we should really focus on the ones that concern infertility because mm. they are... Oh, so not all STIs no, no, no. concern no, no, infertility? No, no, no. no. There are very few, mostly bacterial, that are implicated in right. those. Cause, and you, you, you started by mentioning it, that WHO have found that like chlamydia, yes. especially, yes. followed by gonorrhea, yes. and then you have um, syphilis. Mm. And to be honest with you, there are quite a number of STIs. If, as I'm talking to you now, if a recent study had actually um, found out or um, discovered 26 new sexually transmitted infections, wow. which I cannot mention wow. here. <laughs> so what I'm trying but, to say but, is but that... But you know what, Dr. Mm. Tillema, it's mm-hmm. understandable uh, with the level of uh, bestiality that we see here. Oh, and there yes. one begins to wonder where all of these stuff are coming from. Of course, of course. You see, like I said before, there are new diseases come because we're now and en- people are now engaging a lot of unhealthy, unnatural habits. Yes. And of course, there are some things they call zoonotic diseases, yes. diseases you get from animals. Yes. I'm not yes. saying that other ones are not involved, but yes. I'm going to list it, um, list out the ones according to the order of importance. Yes. So we have things like chlamydia. Chlamydia is very implicated. Gonorrhea, syphilis, genital herpes. Yes. You know, and we have HIV, hepatitis B can be A or B, but B mostly. And the thing about these diseases I've, me- I've, I've just mentioned, that they all have individual roles that they play in causing infertility. They are, for example, things like chlamydia. For women, it's a basic thing. You see mm. that you have a pelvic inflammatory disease going on, where mm. you have a lot of infection or inflammation going around your pelvis, your lower abdomen, having a discharge, and then eventually causing scarring. Yes. You want some form of damage on your tubes and, of course, and everything. Mm. But for guys, let me tell you how, and it's so funny how it's easily missed. Like I said before, a lot of guys for, present asymptomatic. Mm. So you, you, you can easily miss it. So when a, a, a man is affected with chlamydia, what chlamydia does is reduces the motility of the sperm. Mm. It reduces um, the quality. So you don't feel... Well, don't wonder why you have a lot of men coming down. Then you check the um, semen, do a semen fluid analysis. You find out that there are some abno- a lot of abnormal sperm and yeah. a lot of uh, inactive, maybe inactive. inactive, inactive, inactive yes, and sperm. that's what we're seeing these days. A lot of men who are having, apart from their lifestyle of mm. smoking or whatever, they have and they don't know they're already infected with that bacteria. So they say that when they do the semen fluid analysis, they're not impregnating their wife. Right? That the those, the count is low yes. and the quality is low. Yeah. Now look at gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, what it does, apart from the fact that one is very clear, that one people, it's very asymptomatic. It doesn't even show its ugly head just immediately mm. until it progresses. Mm. Then we have what they call infection. Now and, and and sadly, we we understand that gonorrhea is a lot more uh what's common. the word now? No, more more prevalent, more, more, more prevalent yes, in ma'am. in women. Or no, in men in, than in women. Actually, so yeah. it stays it stays longer it's in the women before the before before it shows up. Yes, yeah. Mike. It's yeah. definitely easier for the men to infect the woman than the mm. woman. So mm. even if it infects the woman, if the man doesn't show, but the women show easy, you know, because they are pouring in. Yes. You know. And then of course, like I said, gonorrhea causes infection of the epididymitis. Epididymitis is like the tube that connects the scrotum or yes. the testis yes. to the other other side of the other part of the you know the, the genitals. So that area, that is where, and you know, in the epididymitis, it's it kind of when you talk about epididymitis, inflammation of that tube. Mm. So it's affecting already the storage and the transport mm. of sperm. So you won't even be able to impregnate your wife if you are, you have the gonorrhea infection. Mm. Then we have syphilis. That one causes um, also the inflammation of the tube. That tube I told you about, yeah. and then of course erectile dysfunction. So some women, men are coming down with a lot of erectile dis- dis- dysfunction. dysfunction or impotence where they can't actually sustain erection and mm. even um, impregnate their wife because you need to sustain erection for that to happen mm. and then of course genital herpes that one also severe, severely reduces the sperm count it reduces. then we have hiv hiv does a whole lot of things you know already it's a virus so yes. it's going to affect even the genetic makeup of everything so apart from the fact that it's affecting the dna structure of the sperm Imagine if that one translates, when you do a semen fluid analysis, yes. already the sperm is looking funny, it's mm. looking abnormal, then um, it's causing reduction in testosterone, a lot of things. And then you have hepatitis. Hepatitis reduces sperm count and reduces um, the sperm motility. So, like I said before, it's, those are the basic things that people need to worry it's, about. The treatment is actually easy. It's curable. Most STIs are curable, especially if it's bacterial. Yes. You know, but... Um, 
the thing is if you address it on time address it on time so when you talk about treatment you won't talk about treatment treatment is very easy we have drugs for that but i'm talking about if you want to actually not get into that stage where you start battling with you know dealing with infections screening screening is really the second level of prevention so if you screen you address these things on time mm. once you know you've been exposed and exp talking about exposure even for hiv we have prophylactic um, um regimen for yeah. Exposure. Because are some you know? medical terms. So, oh, let me talk about prophy <laughs> prophylaxis. What are drugs you can take once yeah. you've been exposed to maybe unprotected sex, sex, or you feel like, oh, my lifestyle has been funny, but you're not showing any symptoms. See, well, well, the best bet: screen on time to avoid stories that touch. That's the most important thing. Screen on time. But most importantly, educated. Get you know some form of self literacy yes. in terms of get informed yes. i believe that the decisions we, we make sometimes are come from lack of information Fantastic. you know so if you're going to make any decision about your life get informed so mm. that you can make a well like you said a well informed decision be faithful yes. to your your, your, your partner spouse, yes. be faithful and do not address or do not indulge in multiple sexual partners without protection there are different ways you can condom is still we are not cheap. encouraging many sexual partners we're not condom, we are definitely not but, but if you must yes, if, if you, you must, must yes. you must also protect the next person if you don't Fantastic. value your life but value the other person's life dr chidi marjai it's such a pleasure talking to you yes, on the show